reaction? Uh, it was devastating. Uh, you know, I just celebrated, you know, my, my three-year-old and, and five-year-old have back-to-back -back birthdays uh, yesterday and the day before. And, you know, I'm sitting there with them and all of a sudden this news comes in and you don't believe it. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. And, you know, it, there's, there's really just no words. I, you know, I, I tried to, to figure out what to say and, you know, you know, the best thing that I can think of is, you know, when you, you find out that Whitney Houston passed or Michael Jackson passed or Prince passes, those are things that just catches the entire world off guard. This man is not just a basketball icon. I, I think we're limiting him. Um, you know, this, this man was a global icon. People all around the world are mourning. You know, he, he helped spread the game of basketball. His daughter, Gianna, who, you know, he said helped bring him back to basketball because he felt like he had exhausted everything he could. And his daughter, Gianna, was the first one to say, hey, Dad, let's watch this game. Hey, Dad, I want you to, to have me coach. So to be there with my kids and then to see you know, this news, it, it, it was devastating. Hey, Richard, I want to ask you about something that's been making the waves today. It's something that Kobe's always kind of identified with, but it's really working its way into the ether today, and that is the Mamba mentality. And, you know, just as a basketball fan, I just thought it was a way of a life for him on the court, but apparently it stretches way beyond that. As a former pro, a contemporary, can you take us inside the Mamba mentality from what you knew of Kobe Bryant? Well, I'll say this. The first NBA Finals game I ever went to, um, it was to watch uh, the Los Angeles Lakers versus the Pacers. Uh, the first NBA Finals game I ever played in was against the Lakers my rookie year. And, you know, when I played uh, in Golden State, that's when Kobe hurt his Achilles. So it's like I felt like I had, you know, been there or played against them in so many different moments. And, you know, he was just perfection. He had all of the physical tools. He had all of the mental tools. He had all of the, you know, just the emotional awareness that it took. And people don't understand how hard it is to achieve greatness. They don't understand how self selfish you have to be to achieve greatness. And that means that there was nobody and there was nothing that was going to stop him from achieving his goals. And that's to be one of the greatest athletes that, you know, this country has ever seen, probably this world has ever seen. And, you know, that's what he just tried to embody into everybody once he retired. And it was funny, once he retired, he kind of became a friend of everyone. And everyone was kind of cautious, like, wait, this is a new Kobe Bryant. But he was like, yo, my competitive, my competitive juices are still here, but I don't have to keep everybody at bay. I can now help grow the game that has done so much for me. I can help mentor younger players. You know, Kyrie is not playing tonight because, you know, he had meant so much to Kyrie and really had just, you know, expressed, you know, so, you know a brotherhood and a family with all of these players and the, and the generation that before him, the generation that he played with, and his legacy will continue. It will continue because there are so many athletes that are 15, 16, that, you know, probably 10, 11 years old that understand the Mamba mentality. They watched him play growing up. And now all of a sudden that, that, that mentality will continue to have impact on, on this league and other sports uh, for years to come last one you said his legacy will live on i'd be remiss if i asked you if i didn't ask you what that legacy is to you to me it was you know he could accomplish and could do things and could focus in that not many players ever did that was a level of respect that i had for him because growing up being a michael jordan fan as was he it was like god i wish i could have that focus i wish i could have that relentless drive but very, very few people ever achieve that, where they have all the physical tools and all the mental drive and physical drive. There's the Tiger Woods, the you know Michael Jordans, there you know the Roger Federer's. There are very, very few that have ever achieved that on this planet that have the tools mentally and physically, and, and that's his legacy to me. Last thing for you, why do you think he connected so much? As you mentioned, when he was playing, he may not have had a lot of friends on the court, but as David Fisdale joined us earlier, that's probably part of his greatness. He had to push everything out just to make sure that the priority was set, to be the best that he could be, and his ceiling was incredibly high. Why do you think he's connected, though, with players that are in the league now that never played with him, with younger people that are just getting into basketball, and people outside of basketball, as Michael mentioned, in Hollywood, pop culture, why do you think he was so all-encompassing? Well, because he was a kid that came in at, at you know, 17, 18 years old, and he knew what he wanted to accomplish. You know, somebody was saying, you know, we were talking here, and it was like, man, we're, we're not going to get a Hall of Fame speech from, from Kobe Bryant. And I was like, Kobe Bryant might have wrote that speech when he was nine years old. 
right? We might still have that speech. That's the type of person, that's the type of focus he had. And I think the younger generation, no different than when we looked up to Michael Jordan, the younger generation, even my generation, looked up to Kobe Bryant. And once he was that competitor, they wanted to compete like him. They wanted to have the versatility in the game. And, and he also did it here in L.A. This is the biggest stage. Like, he continued showtime. Right, him and Shaquille O'Neal and what he was able to accomplish after Shaquille O'Neal left. This was all about, you know, L.A. and doing it under the brightest lights with all of the people around watching you. And you did not let anyone down for 20 years, even when you look at his final game and how he finished his career. It's well said. The numbers just don't do it justice, but the numbers are truly remarkable. Five NBA titles, 18 All-Star appearances. A father, probably more important, a father than all of those NBA accolades. And we appreciate this new father, Richard Jefferson, joining us on SportsCenter this evening. Richard, really appreciate your perspective. Thank you for having me, guys.